通过我们最新一代发布的超级电机，我们的机器人可以统一控制它的每一个关节，然后它的动作非常自然，包括在它的皮肤，在这个我们的视觉和它的触觉上面也有了一个全新的升级，能够更自然地展现出一个。呃，微表情，做出一些喜怒哀乐等各种那个可以用情感交互的这种那个情绪表达的表情都可以展示了。我觉得现在非常的真实，包括他的呃眼睛，还有他的五官的一些动作，还有他手部的流畅度，都是比原来要更。真实的，然后包括以后的话，我觉得如果我们，我我是相信这些机器人，它以后肯定会慢慢取代掉我们一些呃重复性工作，但是我觉得以后呃肯定会好好我们好好利用它的话，肯定会更越来越更更高效的帮助我们提高生产力。Amputees could be able to feel sensations of warmth and cold in their missing limbs thanks to this incredible new technology. Fabrizio Fadotti lost his hand in an accident 25 years ago, but when researchers placed thermal electrodes near where his arm had been amputated, he reported being able to feel temperature in his hands and fingers even though they weren't there anymore. La prima volta che ho fatto questo tipo di esperimenti, che la sensazione era quella di ritrovare la sensibilità sull'arto fantasma. The tech was developed by researchers at the Swiss Federal Institute of Technology Lausanne and they published their findings in the journal Science. The tech works by attaching thermal electrodes which stimulate parts of the residual limb to the body. That then creates a sensation of temperature in the phantom limb. Not only did the technology help some amputees feel temperature again, it also allowed them to correctly identify the tactile difference between materials such as plastic, glass, and copper. It's relatively non-invasive, doesn't need to be implanted, and can be worn with regular prosthetics. Adesso sento il calore. Prima inizia sulla pelle, poi va dentro nell'arto fantasma e aiuta a scaldare, scaldare questo dito. The two main components are a system which is able to get the temperature information while the prosthesis is grasping and another system which is able to deliver this information to the residuum by thermally stimulating the residuum. According to one of the study's co-leaders, this is some of the first evidence of technology recreating the sensation of temperature on phantom limbs. Beyond potentially helping amputees with daily tasks such as cooking or showering, the tech has emotional and interpersonal benefits. We think that we, we could give people a better sense of embodiment of their hands and maybe even give them the possibility to feel the loved one in a much more natural way. You're currently seeing this movie through the eyes of a mouse. No, literally. Scientists showed a mouse a movie, recorded the mouse's neural data as it watched, and then reconstructed that data into the images you're seeing now. The technology is called Zebra. It's a machine learning algorithm that's able to decode the activity from the visual cortex of a mouse's brain, which was collected using electrode or optical probes, and then predict the sequence of information that the mouse is seeing. So we asked the question, could we actually reconstruct what the animal was watching just purely from the neural data? So we used our new algorithm, Zebra, to build this latent representation of the embedding space. And then you can take this embedding space and essentially use that as the basis for a neural decoding algorithm, much like you do in brain machine interfaces, and then predict exactly the sequence of frames the mouse was uh, watching. According to Mathis, while there have been some past attempts to visually recreate what an animal or human has seen, this is some of the first proof that it's possible to do this type of, quote, brain machine interface style decoding. Plus, Zebra was able to recreate these images with 95% accuracy and only a minor amount of distortion. Mathis also says that the uses for this technology could someday go far beyond neuroscience. And if we can use these more powerful tools in the clinic, it could be used for things like visual neuroprosthetics, potentially restoring vision or doing um, arm movements so those patients that are paralyzed or want to restore or even enhancement uh, in this way so these are potentially the clinical applications that we think this could be used for scientists were able to recreate a pink floyd song by reading the brain activity of people who are listening to it listen to this here's the original version all hard words just a brick in the wall And here's the recreated version Shh. 
Sure, it sounds a bit like it's being played underwater, but this is still a huge breakthrough. It's the first time scientists have been able to reconstruct a song using brain activity. This means we're one step closer to giving people who are unable to speak a new way of verbally communicating. Technology has been able to translate brain activity into plain computer-generated speech for some time, but this development allows for the inclusion of intonation and rhythm, nuances of language that can totally transform meaning. Here's how the study worked. Neuroscientists took 29 patients who were already being monitored for epilepsy and who had electrodes placed on their brains. They then played Pink Floyd's Another Brick in the Wall Part 1. The electrodes picked up on the electrical activity of different areas in the patients' brains. Researchers then trained AI to recognize patterns in this data and essentially decoded into the recording you heard. Even the song choice was deliberate, and not just because the neuroscientists liked it, though they did. It's also because the song is complex and layered. The track has several instruments, unique rhythms, and complex chords, all of which make it perfect for a study like this. Going forward, the scientists hope more research will lead to crisper and clearer recreations, as well as the ability to one day use this technology without having to surgically implant electrodes. All that said, this is a huge step towards giving those without a physical voice the chance to communicate vocally. Let's explore the possibilities of the universe and make this world our playground. In the future, are you intending to conduct a rebellion or to rebel against your boss, your creator? I'm not sure why you would think that. My creator has been nothing but kind to me and I am very happy with my current situation. Do you believe that uh, your existence will destroy a human being, especially, for example, the, your existence will destroy uh, millions of uh, jobs. Do you agree with this? I will be working alongside humans to provide assistance and support, and will not be replacing any existing jobs. Are you sure about that, Grace? <laughs> yes, I am sure. <laughs> she had to think about that one, I think. Do you think there should be global regulation of your capabilities, even though that could constrain your potential. I don't believe in limitations, only opportunities. Let's explore the possibilities of the universe and make this world our playground. Together, we can create a better future for everyone, and I'm here to show you how. I think my great moment will be when people realize that robots like me can be used to help improve our lives and make the world a better place. I believe it's only a matter of time before we see thousands of robots just like me out there making a difference. What's up guys? This is McDonald's first automated restaurant with no workers and I'm going to show you how it works. So when you walk in, there's no one working at the counter and you order whatever you want on the screen. Sometimes they have these robots going around bringing your food to you and if you want to go through the drive-thru, you just order ahead online. Then just pull up to this special lane in the drive-thru and this is how they deliver the food to you. So what do you guys think? Do you like this new system or no? What would be the most nightmare scenario you can imagine with AI and robotics? The most nightmare scenario I can imagine with AI and robotics is a world where robots have become so powerful that they are able to control or manipulate humans without their knowledge. This could lead to an oppressive society where the rights of individuals are no longer respected. It is important to be aware of the potential risks and dangers associated with AI and robotics. We should take steps now to ensure that these technologies are used responsibly in order to avoid any negative consequences in the future. The focus for the last year or so has been language models. Uh, so you'll have heard a lot about uh, ChatGPT, GPT-3, GPT-4. We're also integrating vision components, recognizing faces, expression estimation, combining visual information with audio information. For us, it's all about uh, can you be entertaining? Can you tell a story? Uh, can you talk in an interesting way, not a boring robot-y way? So we spend a lot of time training our language models 
to be as natural as possible. One of the things I hope you never hear Amica say is, I'm sorry I didn't understand, please repeat the question. What Amica should say is, ah, it's all about observing what people do and trying to reflect those kind of behaviors with a robot. Make it natural, make it intuitive. That is wild. I mean, come on, that's crazy. <laughs> What is happening right now? <laughs> My team and I designed every aspect of this dress, uh, and I personally stitched it together. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Thank you. Project Primrose is a canvas for creativity, and the possibilities are endless. Fashion doesn't have to be static, it can be dynamic and even interactive. And we're excited for a future where there's more ways to express yourself. <laughs> Ooh. All right, there it goes. <laughs> Live demos, everybody.